Hey, I'm Captain Eddie. Welcome to the shop. If you bought one of my Black Hawk rigs and you're setting it up, first it came in a tube sort of like this. Unscrew the ends, take the wood screws out, tap it apart or put the saw to it because sometimes I super glue this thing together just to make sure it doesn't fall apart in transit. Get the components out that we'll start laying it out with. Now what I do is start laying out with the base. This is a base. Now it doesn't matter if you put it on the right side or the left side because it's ambis, ambidextrous. Okay, <laughs> ambidextrous. Doesn't matter. The base needs to go center line of the wheel. Now the way I do this is put one screw on this end of the base. put the longest arm in and then align it by that. Now here I can visually see that I'm going to be centered under the wheel but and I put one screw in. Then to make sure I'm centered under the wheel on the other end I take a straight edge across the face of the wheel and make sure I'm parallel. Then when I'm parallel I'll set the back screw. That's the first step. Now if you're off, what happens is your math will be off from side to side. And is it critical? Sometimes it is. Depends on how fine a cut you're looking to do. So, now we've got the base set and we've got the longest arm in. This is the one that you'll be using for roughing gouges. And I'll show you more about that setup in a minute. But let me go ahead and put these two screws in and we'll continue. The base is set in its place. The next part, uh, what we'd like to do right now, because you have the parts, is I'm going to show you how to use the gouge rig and AccuSet. And AccuSet is an important part of the project because it doesn't allow you or it helps you not to remove so much steel each time you sharpen by resetting your, ga your gauge right where you had it the last time. Now. This is a roughing gouge. I blackened the edges with the regular marks a lot. This is where I bring the old marks lights from the office. Doesn't matter what color. Now I'm going to pull this out and lock it down. And I'm looking over the top to see what the gap is right now, right up in here. I'm looking down through there to see if it lines up or not. And then I'm going to tip it in and tip it out until it gets there and then I'm going to lock it in place. Now, to check and see if it's grinding right, I don't turn it on. I go over here to the other wheel and I spin it backwards. Yeah. And then I'll look at it and I see that I'm real high on the edge. So I need to go in a little bit more. So we crank it open, move it up a silly millimeter, and then we do it again. Now how critical is this? Well if you just want to stop wasting steel, it's real critical. Now I'm more than halfway across the face. So this time I'm going to move it in just a smidgen. A smidgen is a little bit less than a tad, which is a little more than a skosh. You got those calibrations? Okay. Oh. And all this is at least a fourth of a bit. Now move that in again, and now I'm going all the way across the face, the whole piece. Well, yeah, let me get over here and show you. You see how it how it shined it? All right, I'm all the way across the face. There it is. Now that helps. Now my speed, 1800 RPMs. If you like a faster grinder, it's okay. Then I'll go in gently. One pass, a little, a little bit low, but just a little. Two passes, I still got a little black showing. Three times, I got a brand new 
razor sharp gouge. Now, if I'm using AccuSet every time, I wouldn't have to make three passes. I'd be able to go in, make one round, and be done. Can you imagine how much longer your tools will last? I just fell off the Sorby's Christmas list forever. Now, I pushed AccuSet up and tightened it down. The only time I'm going to have to worry about that is if I dress this wheel a lot. And I mean a lot. So now, we have set this one. It is done. This piece can go hang on the shelf next to the tool and when you want to sharpen gouge, it's ready. Now, if you want one for a ball gouge, I can also provide you an extra one and you can, with an AccuSet and you can just use it for your ball gouge. But if you know you want that, tell me when you order it. Now, let's get on to something else. This is the next rig you're going to get in your kit. This is the Ellie Eversary Double Step and Ellsworth Single Step Grind Rig Gauge and everything all combined. Yes, this is really multi-purpose. Let me get you on showing you how this one works. So you understand what we have here. I'm going to put the second AccuSet on this bar. It, your kit comes with two. Put the bar in the grinder. Stop there. Your kit comes with some components for levelers. And you have to start putting these together. We'll start with the simple parts. And this takes you a few minutes. We have a 3 8 all thread here. You really think I would have practiced this, huh? But I didn't. Alright, I have a 3 8 all thread here. And the same thing here. I'm going to stick that and then I'm going to get back to it. A little break took like 10 minutes. It's the middle of February. The shop got to 80 degrees and I had to turn on the fan. Alright, now these studs are much longer than you'll probably ever need. Why? Because this rig is made to fit on almost any situation you come up with. So in order to get things right, I've added some extra length to them. If it bothers you later on, cut them off. Don't mail them back. It's okay. Now, in the David Ellsworth setup rig, the math is very simple. You put the rig, the, the tool, in the jig and let it stick out two inches. This is two inches. And I'll show you how we'll use it in a little bit. And then this pocket goes seven inches from the face of this wheel and four inches down from the center of the wheel. Now, I've made this rig a long time ago. I cut this out of a chunk of Corian. And I know that this line is the top of my wheel the center of my wheel. And this is seven inches from here. And this pocket right here is four inches down. So this pocket right here needs to be at this height. So I'm going to adjust a few parts and then join you again in a moment. Take a look at it. I need to be seven inches out and four inches down from the center. That's the math that's critical for the David Ellsworth grind. Well, I'm glad you didn't stick around for that. There's an old phrase that involves a monkey and a football, and that's what it looked like. Okay, now, I've done some adjustments. Now, I can check it, and I can tell you that now, my cup here is going to be really close. I'm going to adjust a little bit, and it's where that pivot point is, that's the, the spot. So, I know that's going to be four inches down that pocket seven inches out. This one I'll get to in a moment. But that is for the Ellsworth grind. I can lock my collar in place, move my AccuCheck up. Now, what happens here? Every time I come back to grind, if I take this out and put in my gate, my gouge grinder, then I come back tomorrow, put this back in, lock it in place. Guess what happened again? Boom. I'm back where I was. I'm at my 7 and my 4. 
Oh, tighten up all these parts. Don't let them vibrate. They will. You've got enough components here to go put another. Don't put another one together. What am I saying? Buy it from me. Okay. So you can make yours work. Second pocket has got to be forward and lower than the first one for a certain kind of grind. So now, part two, do, is the Ellsworth gouge and the Avisara gouge. Now, we're going to sharpen something. Finally, finally, which you tuned in for, sharpening a gouge. I told you about the two. If you can see this little black bar sticking out here, that is two inches back from this edge. And that's the third number that's in the Ellsworth math. Two out, four down, seven out, okay? And I give you the Ellsworth package so you can see that I'm not snowing you there. I'm going to push this out, let it touch that bar, and then tighten it down. I know touching steel to steel, you're worried about getting dull, but you're going to sharpen it, right? It's important that this sits square. Now, I can't get the camera looking at it clearly, so I took another picture. You see in this photograph that I sharpened the end of the, the, end of the thumb screw to match the bottom of this gouge because I wanted to square it up really nice. Now, I am ready. I am two inches out. I am snug. I am square across here, okay? Look down it, you can see it. I'm square across. This is ready to go. Crank it up. I'm going to go right here in this spot, and then I'm going to lay it way over to one side. Stop short. Come back. Go up the other side. Now why am I stopping short? Because if I dilly-dally on that tip, I'm going to make that tip blunt. See, I want to hang out there for a second. I'm blunting. So I don't. I want to come up, lighten up. Come up, lighten up. Now I'm going to get... This is when I can see and I take the bumps off the top of it and check it. This is really a poor ground gouge. Not, not ground by me, but or formed by the manufacturer. There's a bump down in that U. It's really terrible, but it was cheap. I got it off an auction, and I didn't pay real close attention to it. But it gives me a little, well, actually it gives me two pumps, one dip and one rise, because the casting was poor or the machining was poor. So, now that gives me a really good Ellsworth grind. I'm going to have to do this by photograph rather than video, so you can see what I ended up with. With all that information, you now know how to set up your Blackhawk. Put it in place, play with it, have a little fun, make some adapters and some other gizmos. You can use a piece of three-quarter inch tubing and glue anything you want to make a stop to do other parts and pieces. If you need other parts and pieces, just let me know. We'll work something out. I also want to tell you that I've been working really hard the last couple of weeks on something that you might not have noticed. It, it's not here. It's here. www.eddiecastlin.com is back. Yes, it was there for a long time, but it's coming back because you. You asked for it. I was not going to fool with that again. But you guys kept saying some of the prints I'm sending out for tips just suck. You want better pictures and better images, and you don't want to wait, and you don't want to get it all, and it takes a lot to get it down, so I'm going to rework a whole lot of that stuff. I'll re-photograph it, rewrite it, and put it back on my website. I'll also be putting some pictures and links to YouTube videos and stuff as I get to them, but it's all going to be on right here.